the page. Yeah. Now, although I can make it larger, yeah, a little small, yeah, make it a little larger. Yeah. All right. Now I show you the editing feature. Yeah. But in the implementation, a lot of details. So I will explain uh, all the details. Yeah. Then after you read the code, so you will feel better. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you have too many questions. Okay. First, let me select any of the column. I click the edit button. Now you can see first the data of this row, all the fields are displayed in, in editable in, input fields. So we can edit any value. Yeah, here I just, you know, yeah, put some different value, any value. All right, yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> then we click update button. Yeah. Now you see the data is updated. Yeah. And it is done by the Ajax technology so there is no page reloading yeah so we just update one row okay you see the difference yeah. and the, let us change change the data back to the original another editing step yeah i just remove yeah all right update yeah so you see you know yeah pretty simple yeah what is see pretty simple but behind the scene we need to do a lot of work yeah so let me explain that part yeah in my netbeans yeah look at here i create a project i call a university edit data project yeah. all right let me check john john's name all right okay yeah yeah all right so the i will upload this sample code university edit data this sample code yeah all right let's start from that uh you know, edit button. Yeah. First, let me show you the edit button. Yeah. All right. So look here, this part, uh, after we display the data, yeah, I create a table cell, yeah, you know, TD element. Yeah. In this TD element, I put a two div elements two diff elements, one for the edit button, another is for update button. Yeah. yeah. Let me make the screen larger so you can see more code, yeah? So make it a little larger. All right, pretty long, yeah, look at that, pretty long, all right. So let's start from here, right. yeah, and uh, let me let me make it yeah it is long let me make it uh break it how about that let me break it like this here i also let me break it here so you can see it without scrolling also break break here without scrolling yeah so we can see that all right let me you uh you know do a screenshot cutting so then i can write explanation on this page now i can do annotation on this page Okay, yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so yeah. yeah. Send my pen, blue pen. All right. Good. All right. All right. Here. The, the button, yeah. the first button, edit button. Oh, why, why erasing? All right, yeah. here, the yeah. edit button first. This edit button, uh, we use a div element to hold it. Hold it, yeah. and uh, another one update button. We use another div element to hold it. Okay, yeah. At the beginning, the edit button is visible. Yeah, visible at the beginning. Yeah. So we use the style display property block means visible. Okay, yeah. At the beginning. We hide, we make the update button invisible. So here the style uh, CSS rule, uh, you know, display property none, that means invisible. Okay, yeah, invisible at the beginning. Yeah, we do not show it. Yeah. But then when we click, the button edit button so we call this edit this row function inside this function we will swap these two buttons or oh, that means we make the edit button invisible and we make uh update button visible no so i will show you that part later no. so here so you know uh uh, that's the reason uh, I use these two uh, elements. Yeah, control visible or and invisible. Yeah, and uh, to control this diff element, I need to use uh, an ID, unique ID value. Yeah. So here you can see the ID, the first part, the fixed string. I call it edit btn diff. But each row I need to associate with row number. Each row has a row number, right? Row num number. Okay, yeah. We know on table many rows. The first number is zero. Yeah. Index two. Yeah. Row number. Yeah. So we use this PHP uh, expression dollar J. You know that gives us the row number yeah so we can use that to control the buttons for the correct for the selected row yeah so that is what one, one thing all right so next uh look at the parameters for this edit this row function yeah comma look at this comma <clears throat> separate the parameters the first parameter comma right? second parameter comma and the third parameter so i pass three parameters to this function yeah. first two parameters that's the data data of first two fields data of the first two fields first two parameters yeah why data of first two fields i explained before for all these five tables we can use the values of the first two fields to identify the rows so the reason we use the first two fields to identify the 
the rows. Yeah. <clears throat> It's a unified way to identify rows, yeah. Because we have three row, uh, three tables with primary keys. Those with primary keys, we only need to use the first field. But we also we have two uh, tables with composite keys. Yeah, no primary key, but there is a composite key. That composite key, first two fields. Yeah. So in that way, so if I pass the, yeah, because I want to use simple way. Yeah. So here you can see for those three tables with primary keys, the second field value is redundant, right? We don't need the second field value redundant. Yeah. But it's okay. So we use redundant data. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt. Yeah. So we just include it. Yeah. So when you understand this kind of detail, yeah, otherwise you have too many questions to ask. So I try to cover all the details in the code. Yeah. All right. So now you know <clears throat> the first two parameters feel data values. Yeah. And if you look at carefully, I use a pair of single quotes to around the first two values, a pair of single quotes. That's important yeah. in JavaScript, because we expect them to be strings, right? Strings, yeah. But even if integer numbers, yeah, if we use single quotes around numbers, still okay, not wrong. All right. But think about if we have string values, if you do not use a pair of quotes, then you, <laughs> you may have problem, all right? You may have problem, yeah. So for that reason, no matter it's number or string, if there is a possibility, those two values could be strings, so with better, we use a pair of quotes around it, single go quotes or double quotes. But here, look at, because we need to use double quotes to <clears throat> represent attribute values, right? Yeah, we, we need to use double quotes for attribute values. There, inside the double quotes, <clears throat> we use single quotes. Otherwise, you know, the structure would be wrong. Yeah. So your double quotes, what's the meaning of your double quotes, right? So your structure would have problem. Yeah, so some, sometimes uh, we need to use single quotes, sometimes double quotes. So here we use single quotes, yeah. Then <laughs> the last parameter, the row number, right? Yeah, this last one, dollar $J, row number, we know it's a number, okay? Yeah, so we know it's a number. So we do not include it in a pair of double quotes, not string, yeah, number values, yeah. So we are 100% sure. So in that case, we do not need to use a pair of quotes, yeah. All right, so that is the, uh, so, the edit button, yeah. the update button, the structure similar. Yeah. Because when we click the update button, we still, we need to use the first two field values to identify that role. Yeah. In our query, we need to, you know, uh, specify the role to be edited. So here we use old values. These two yeah, old values. Yeah. Old values will be replaced by new values because 
the first two fields, our users could enter different values for the first two fields. It could happen. So we, after they added new values, we still keep uh, old values. Otherwise, we couldn't identify that role, that selected role. Okay, yeah. So we still keep older values yeah, than the row number. Yeah. So that's the update button. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, now let us understand this function, JavaScript function. Edit this row, JavaScript function, and this one we use AJAX. And the, that update function, update this row, we also use AJAX. Yeah. So these two functions, we use AJAX. Yeah. All right. <laughs> to explain that, yeah, let me save this one. Yeah, because when I do another screenshot, the first one will be gone. Okay. Yeah. So I need I need to keep keep this this explanation details all right so let me create a folder uh, called uh, figures yeah all right Let me just call figure one. It's good enough. All right. All right. So now uh, I can do second screenshot. Yeah. So go to the, I like to go to the JavaScript function. Cool. I do not need. All right. Yeah. All right. Here. Add this row. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The function. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just uh, make it shorter. Yeah. So here, put everything in the current screen. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, this function, okay, all right. <clears throat> yeah, let me take another screenshot. All right. Save it as a figure two. All right. Yeah. All right. So here you can see we pass three parameters. The first two x y corresponds to the field values, two field values. And we know we treat them as string values, first two x, y. And the third one, it's the row number, u, row number, yeah, row number, x, y, data of of first two fields <clears throat> yeah right. and uh, this line that we need to use this object for a Ajax communication this line 
this object communication. Send and receive data. Okay. Yeah. Then when we need to retrieve the data, we need this parameter, this MN, this value, we store it uh, as the table number. Table number. Each table, there is a number or index from zero, one, two, three, four. First table index zero, and so on. Yeah. So, and this value, yeah, you may wonder, you know, why we, what, what is this? Yeah. What is this? Yeah. Here I show you. I intentionally I store the, because this table number is useful for our data processing. So we need this piece of data. So we need to make it available somewhere we can retrieve. Yeah. Here, let me show you. How do I make it available yeah, in this unit input PHP? I find a place. I find some place. Yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look at this place. Look at this this line. This line. Inside that this form. Yeah, we have a form, HTML form. Inside this form. It jumped it out. Inside this form, look at this input line 161. This line. I put an input element. ID equals MN. Type equals hidden. I I I I I use a hidden field. So we call it this this input field. This field we call a hidden field. Hidden field that means it's invisible. Uh, nobody can see it but we need to store some data so sometimes we need to store some useful data but we do not want to show to our users so the users do not need to see these data items yeah. oh salim yeah all right Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. So that's why we make it hidden. Yeah. Here, we do that. Yeah. So we make this table number, table number value, the current value, uh, print dollar and M, the current table number. Yeah. We have that value. Yeah. So we put in this hidden field. Yeah. And here, when we retrieve, here you can see ID equals M, double quotes MN, and the name equals double quotes MN. Yeah. Because when we retrieve, we need to retrieve in different places. Yeah. ID, when we retrieve from a JavaScript function, yeah, usually it's better use ID. We know yeah, ID unique, right? Yeah, ID. ID value is supposed to be unique. So it's very convenient. So in a JavaScript function, we need to use this ID uh, attribute value to retrieve its value. But we also put it in the form action, enter table row.php. Yeah, this form yeah, for another feature. Right. Remember, we enter a new role. Another. That's another feature. We already have it. In that one, we also need this value, this table table number value. But in that form, when we retrieve the value, we need need this name attribute. 
Oh, yeah, always, yeah, annoying, yeah. So now you can see, yeah, why we have this ID equals MN and the name equals MN. Yeah. In JavaScript, we use ID value to retrieve its value. In a PHP file, yeah, PHP file, we use the name to retrieve its value, okay? In two different places, we need to retrieve this value. Yeah. All right, so now you understand uh, this hidden field. Yeah. Now, let's go back to our screenshot one. Now you know this, li the, this line, we create that variable MN, we need that value, table number value. And when we use Ajax to call a backhand PHP data processing file, we need to also send this MN value table number. We need to know which table we are doing processing. Yeah. All right. Then the URL part. Now, the URL part, how do we send data? to the server side of PHP, yeah. I use a string variable my URL to form that URL, okay, yeah. The first part, I need a PHP data processing file called get data by row.php, yeah. yeah. So you, from this name, you know, the purpose we use it we want to get one row of data the selected row of the current table we want that php file send that row data back to us okay yeah all right then question mark we need to pass some parameters necessary parameters yeah yeah the first one the first parameter I give a name called FD1, so field one, yeah. because we need to use first two fields. Yeah. The field one value, yeah, X, yeah. remember the parameter passed to this function, yeah, X. Yeah. All right, then ampersand to separate different pra parameters. The second parameter is called FD2, yeah. the field number two, and its value is Y. Okay, all right. Then the third one, ampersand, MN, the table number equals that MN. Yeah. So we need to send these three pieces of data as parameters, as query parameters to that back end php data processing file get data by row.php yeah so we send in this way so we prepare our data sending request in this way yeah so that is this line all right so then in the middle so you know that's the you know uh, ajax part yeah let me jump to the bottom two lines first because that's easy to understand yeah then after that let's look at the middle part all right the bottom two line you can see when we send a request to the server we need to specify what method to use get a method or post method yeah here we use get method yeah here yeah. If you use post method, it's fine yeah, for this project. So we do not see the difference. Yeah. So get or post, we do not see much, you know, critical difference. Yeah. So then the second parameter, the URL, my URL. So that string, yeah. And the true, yeah. So then send. Yeah. So these two lines we send the request to server-side data processing file for processing. Yeah. 
later we will go there to see how it is processed for processing all right then here the middle part on x http onload yeah 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 because you know the web after the page is loaded you know the function an anonymous rollback uh not rollback uh callback function yeah here we call this it's a callback function okay yeah because after the data processing file returns the result we need to do some display processing yeah we need to arrange the data for appropriate display so we do it in this callback function okay yeah and this function because here we only use this function at this particular place we do not need a name yeah so you do not see the function name so we call it anonymous function there is no name yeah we just use right here yeah inside this edit this role this place we use this function okay all right then look at this line const row arr this dot response dot text that is the return the result from the server so this whole thing return data processing result from the server. All right, yeah. so as a string, yeah. So I make it a string, all right. Yeah. But think about this string should contain, this string should contain contains the data of one row, one whole row. We know data in one row with several fields. several fields when we display this row data in this row we need to separate those fields yeah so the question how to separate when we send data we use one string to hold the whole row yeah but we need to separate all the field values yeah. here i use a simple way yeah so this way I use a delimiter. Look at, you know, when I make, when I pack all these values in one string, I use some special delimiter. So to pack yeah, the special symbol, yeah, limit per, okay, yeah. But, you know, there is a better way yeah this delimiter so that's a simple solution yeah so we just put multiple pieces of data in one string now we send it after we receive it we can break it yeah we have another function the split javascript split function to break it into pieces using the given delimiter symbol yeah, but uh, a better way, better way means uh, more robust. Yeah, because when you use some special symbol for delimiters, there is a possibility your special symbols, if it confused with, with the data, then you have trouble. Okay, here I select special symbols, then the chance that we can confuse it with special 
symbols in data is very small, okay? But that won't be 100% safe, okay? Yeah, so for a better solution, 100% safe, we need to use another structured way. We call it JSON data, J-S-O-N. Yeah. JSON objects. Yeah. And here, because if I, I talk about JSON objects, I need to spend a lot of time to explain this JSON structure and how to use it. So here I just pick a simple solution. So I use special delimiters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can, uh, in this way, I do not need to use JSON, All right? Yeah. So when you see the special symbol, yeah, that's the meaning, okay? All right. Then after we call the split JavaScript function with the given delimiter symbol, we get array, row ARR, this array variable, yeah. row ARR, array variable. Yeah. So we can retrieve data piece by piece from this array variable, okay, all right. And uh, <clears throat> here I also, I store this row ar dot length, the number of fields in this row. I need this value when I do update. When I update it, I need this value. I need to know how many fields do we have in this table? It, yeah, we need that information so we can for, form the query statement update query statement we need that number okay yeah so that number i store it in another hidden field yeah remember we use hidden field okay yeah hidden field let me show you that hidden field yeah all right so here uh look at this line line 145 this line all right this line, yeah. ID non calls type hidden value initially empty, yeah. But we can store new values to it, yeah. So now here in this place, we store row arr dot length number of elements in this array. That number in this hidden field. So later, when we call update function, we need to retrieve this number. Yeah, all right. So then to display data from, uh, you know, uh, received from the server side, and we need to put it in the input field. Yeah. So this line, we put it in the input field. Yeah. Here, yeah, let me show you that, that table cell input field yeah, here. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's not, yeah, here. All right, this place, all right. One table cell, so this is one table cell. All right, one table cell. Table cell, in order to modify its content, I need to give it ID, special ID. Okay, yeah, so here I want to explain the special ID I created here. R means row. R, capital R, means row, row number. Row number dollar J. C means column. Yeah, we need to describe row number and a column number so c dollar k dollar k corresponds to the column index yeah. so we form a special id in this way with the row number and the column number yeah. all right so then when we need to change the content of each table cell so we 
use the appropriate ID yeah, the, with this structure, its content, inner HTML, its content. Yeah, it's very annoying. Yeah. yeah, let me attach my keyboard so then that soft keyboard won't be pop up. Yeah. Yeah. Attach my hardware keyboard. Yeah. All right. Then the input, this element, yeah, this element, I form this element. You can see I need to give an ID, a different ID. Right? FD, field, field, row number, U is the row number. Field, FD, row number plus C, I. So that I, the column number. Yeah. Type text. Yeah. We, need, we need a editable field, text. Yeah. Value that we retrieve from the array. Row ARR of I element. Yeah. All right. After that, we switch the buttons. We make the edit button invisible. You see, now we change its style dot display value to non, so it's invisible. Yeah. Then we change the update button visible. So we change the its display value from non to block. So then it becomes visible. Yeah. So that's the edit this row function. Yeah. So you can see. Yeah. All right. Next, update function. Yeah. Update function. Oh, but uh, before we go to update function, I need to show you this uh, get data by row, that PHP file. Yeah, because this file returns the row data here. Yeah. So that is the PHP file. So we retrieve that three parameters, yeah. three parameters, first three lines. Then we connect to database, okay? Then we use the, you know, our, our way to get a table information. Yeah. So we, so you're familiar with these lines, yeah. The only difference is this line, line 33, to retrieve one row from the table. Yeah, look at this query statement. Uh, so you understand the meaning, right? By providing the values of first two fields yeah. and the table name, dollar table underscore name, uh, we can get the right table name from this table array with dollar mm with the table number. So we can get the right table name. Yeah. So you know, this line will return the selected row of data. Yeah. All right. So then we just retrieve. Retrieve before we send it here. Uh, look at I use a you know string variable dollar out, and I use you know a special delimiter. This special delimiter to connect all the field values and uh, make them in one string. Yeah. Because we only send one string. Yeah. Here I. Do not, you know, prepare that, you know, JSON object, send it back. So here I just send a plain string yeah, using special delimiter, you know, simple way. Yeah. So then print dollar out. So we send it back to the, you know, uh, Ajax function, yeah, callback. So we, we will go to that callback function. All right, so that's the the edit part. So you see, you know, data display in editable fields. Then the, the update part. Yeah. Update part also, uh, yeah, pretty complicated. So you, you look at the code, see? Yeah, still Ajax, yeah. Part of the code we are quite, we are quite familiar with, yeah, but there is some new code. Yeah. All right. First few lines, yeah, we need to retrieve uh, uh, mn variable, the table number. Yeah. So when we do 
update op operation, we need to know the which table for it. Yeah. Then num calls, we need to know the number of columns for this row. Yeah. So we can use the array way, for loop array way to hack all new data, new values for this row. We pack it in one string. Yeah, we need to do that. Yeah. All right. CRT VAL, the current CRT VAL, yeah. Current value. Current value. Yeah. Yeah. So I need a variable for the current value. Yeah. 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 Because here, here uh, actually, I need a temporary variable to store the value. Yeah, because I need to use a for loop to go through all the columns. So I need a, you know, a iteration uh, variable. So I, here I use that CRT VAL to store the current value of the table cell. Yeah. All right. So then when I, oh, I also, yeah, here, so you can see so many things I need to do. I create two variable, old FD1, old FD2, old field value, so, you know, old field value, FD1, FD2, field value. Yeah. Why we need to use old field value? Because when, uh, when we need to update a row, we need to use old field values to identify that role yeah, here yeah yeah so, yeah yeah so that that's this one yeah but but the you know here yeah old fd1 old fd2 we need to use these two values to identify the selected role yeah so that's why uh we need to you know store those two pieces, the value, all right. Then we form the data, yeah. the updated data. Yeah. This DAT variable, we will use, we use this variable to store updated row data. Updated row data. Yeah. How to form that this for loop? This for loop. So we form that updated row data. And here I use another special delimiter, yeah, to connect these pieces. Uh, special. Here I I I feel the you know equal sign may not be good, yeah, because when we use uh, send a parameter, we already have equal sign there, right? Yeah, parameter name equal parameter value. We already have equal sign there, so I don't want to you know make make it confused with the existing equal sign so i replace equal by that dash you know minus that symbol yeah so i pack all the updated values uh, in one string variable called a dat yeah all right then when i form the my url at the end, I add another parameter called a DAT equals the value of DAT, string value. Okay, I also send the updated new values in this way to the server. Okay, yeah. So then switch the button. Yeah, so the, you know, block non, so we make, uh, Update button invisible, make edit button visible. Yeah. But after, even after that, we need to make, you know, edit this row, update this row, those two functions, we need to use old FD1, old FD2, old field values. 
uh, these two yeah actually these two variables we store we store the updated updated field values of the, the first two fields yeah. although we call old <laughs> here although we call old yeah with respect to the new editing action it's old yeah but for the current so it's not old yeah it's just the newly newly updated values it may not be old yeah you know anyway yeah we just here we need to replace the previous first two parameter values here you can see yeah so after that then we complete this update yeah but still you you need to understand the back end function i call it set data by row the back end function yeah this one yeah back end function so most part pre pretty similar to the you know get data by row function the main difference is, is this update statement yeah. but we need to use a for loop so here yeah we, we need to break the yeah, first thing we need to break yeah, i break the data part uh, newly updated row data part from one string into an array of string here i use php explode function explode by this delimiter then the string value dot dollar dat break it into a string array yeah then we use that string array we can form the data part of the query statement data part yeah yeah so that's the data part of query statement so i use a php variable dollar calls dat so when i create a query statement i put that variable value here set set all these value things yeah. then use the old field values to identify the role then we execute the query yeah so you can see yeah, yeah. after yeah this file yeah and actually we do not need to return anything right for update we do not need to return any special data yeah. so here i I return nothing okay I return nothing yeah yeah and in our callback function you know we just update some display elements yeah all right but there is another thing actually yeah so here because I didn't do that delete function and for the line here we we also need to update that delete function delete function by by these two values old fd1 old fd2 yeah, because our delete function we needed these two values to identify the role yeah so we need to uh add one line to update delete button with these two parameters yeah all right yeah so then yeah because we are uh, we are near the end of the class so we cannot do delete function together but but I will do it after I explain uh, these two relatively complex function I think uh, you can understand the code much better okay yeah so then based on this understanding uh, I add that delete function uh, the code should be much simpler yeah and uh, finally uh I add a show max button, show max button. So you just write a code for that show max feature. Yeah. A JavaScript function, also you use the Ajax communication object. Yeah. How to send a URL to backend. Yeah. 
Yeah, for delete, yeah, for delete function, we do not need to return anything, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, not delete, not delete, right? Yeah, yeah. Delete, we do not need to, you know, delete. That's another story. For show max, for show max, you need to write that max query. Yeah, you need to find a max value. Yeah. So you you need to do a special query. So that query is very simple. Yeah. Here, uh, you know, with your query knowledge, it's very simple for you. So you do that find the max query, uh, send it back to your callback function. Then you just display that value in some special location. Yeah. So that's the, you know, the last thing you need to do. Okay. Yeah. After that, I hope you have some good experience yeah, in this kind of programming. Okay. After you go through all these things, yeah, uh, so we treat it as a learning process. Yeah, I hope you have some good experience in this kind of programming. Okay. All right. So let me stop uh, right here. Uh, and uh, so we complete uh, uh, all regular classes uh, this semester. Next thing I need to send 